you for accepting me. Uh, I was here actually a year ago, exactly in the hot seat. Yeah. I'm sure you don't remember me, but that's okay. Well, actually, here's the thing. We don't remember you because you're different now and there's no point in focusing on something that is not what absolutely is now. I'm different. Absolutely. Sort of like I'm the different. next generation of children. We don't want them to be like the last generation of children. <laughs> now, actually, I'm a scientist and the question I have is have you ever sat with scientists and explain your theory because your theory are extremely scientific to me every word you speak is extremely scientific because you call path of least resistance that's nothing but tunneling effect in quantum mechanics your vibrations are nothing but zero point energy vibrations of every molecule that we see here today air molecules for example which is nitrogen and oxygen so each and every one of your concept I equate it scientifically and it makes perfect sense to me. That's what's nice about universal laws because at the base of them is everything. Absolutely. Yes. But have you ever sat with uh, quantum mechanics people, you know, physicists and uh, theoreticians and try to explain your theory and even come up with the mathematical foundation for your Well, you are the manifestation of that for us. In other words, <laughs> Because a collaboration like Absolutely, that between yeah. you and Abraham would produce something different than Esther is able to produce because Esther, you see the knowing is here and that knowing has been created or generated by all that has been lived. You understand the evolution of the species, the evolution of all things. So there is a vibrational beingness. There is a further evolution of all things than man has allowed himself to see materially isn't that what the promise yeah, of science really is all about yeah. so here's this vibrational reality and Esther without a scientific vocabulary is receiving the vibration and using as many words as she can find to satisfy the intent that we are offering so we offer our intent and she finds the words and we feel satisfaction in the words that she finds but imagine a collaboration where together you are finding the vibration and communicating and reaching for words that scientists already understand that match the vibrational frequency that we are offering. It would help science. Definitely. It's not necessary to anyone, but it would help science. The reason for me is that you can reach out to much, much more wider audience. Well, the no. scientific audience is rather small. <laughs> and okay. stubborn stubborn that, that's very and true. sort of set in the what is ways that's correct. and also needing everybody scientifically to agree before they move even a little bit forward that's very true but I think one of the main resistance there even I had in the very beginning was the acceptance of that source energy because we need yeah. mass for that that was really my initial you know fight with that theory and so was the bridge for you vibration yeah, vibrations that absolutely. was the bridge yeah, wasn't absolutely. it because yeah. once you begin thinking like a vibrational being everything starts making sense and until not. then you're just moving dirt around right absolutely and my PhD is actually in vibration spectroscopy so that really clicked me right away but the source energy how to equate that you know to the real existence of that yeah. was the one that I was struggling in the beginning yeah. but once I got accepted to that everything was just downstream from that time yeah. on yeah uh, thank you so much yeah. yes indeed yeah.